Finals got the problem with the second city syndrome. We're number one. We won more and with hooliganism and on the field also. It's fucking jealousy. When Danny visited Ajax's stadium, he saw the Jewish star of David. He's interested in knowing about this Jewish connection. Well, they call us Jews, and uh, yeah, we make the, the Jewish uh, star, and we make the FNF. Despite these anti Jewish chants, Ajax hooligans have taken on this identity. We're not Jewish, <laughs> but Amsterdam was a Jewish city. Yes. Especially before the Second World War. Look how stupid they are, they fine. Or, uh, Rotterdam was flattened in the Second World War. Yeah. Boom. And most Nazis, neo-Nazis from Holland come from Rotterdam. How stupid can you be? They explain about the bombs they use. Well, you make a bomb and you throw it. But not like fine with nails in it and shit. Come on, you know? People hear the bomb and they, everybody screams. <laughs> They love it, they love it, you know. When you, when you see smoke and you hear bam, 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 and fucking it's great, man, come on, attacking us, you know. Show us some. This one of the bomb? It comes from Switzerland, it's uh, like TNT. Yeah, there's bombs everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Why, you can buy weapons, you can buy bombs. They fuck with us. We fuck hard with them, yeah, we go hard and it's, it's, it's the same thing for the other for the other guys. This is football violence at the most extreme end of the spectrum. They are armed with bombs and are prepared to use them. In 1997, the top boy of Ajax was murdered when the F side clashed with hooligans from Feyenoord. They were not even playing each other on the day of the fight. They met on the side of a motorway just outside Amsterdam. Wij rennen tussen supporters van Ajax en Feyenoord bij Beverwijk. Vanmiddag is dus één dode gevallen. De dode is waarschijnlijk één van de leiders van de Ajax-gang. Van alle Stanley Messen. Echt honkbalknuppels, gummiknuppels. Carlo Picorne, Ajax's top boy, was beaten to death by Feyenoord hooligans with knives, hammers en chains. Police seized an arsenal of weapons, including baseball bats, Molotov cocktails and electric stun guns. I think that was the point that every, everything uh, was changing in Holland. A new generation was coming. That was the example of them. The government was forced to admit that hooliganism was spiralling out of control. The riot police were unable to deal with the escalation of violence, so the government called in the army. Before long, army choppers were airlifting riot cops into hooligan hotspots. Carlo Picorni was a godlike figure in the Ajax firm, and they still honour him today by keeping his seat in the stadium free. This is one of his close friends. Usually, if a hooligan goes to the floor, the opposition leaves them alone. But Carlo was stabbed to death in front of his friend whilst he was on the floor. The subject is still very raw. I can't talk about it. You know what I mean? Uh, it went wrong and then, well, there was not an honest fight and that's the only thing I say about it. And we're not done with them yet. Never, I think. <laughs> Their hatred for each other seems almost biblical. Vengeance is on the cards. And the Feyenoord Ajax derby is the very next day. Danny's going to the match to experience it for himself. CCTV and all-seater stadiums haven't really been much use here. Feyenoord have set fire to Ajax's stadium and there have been mass riots around the grounds. It can go off at any moment. So here we are, fine old stadium, nicknamed the Tub, and famous as having one of the most intense atmospheres in Holland. Danny's heading around the back of the stadium where the Ajax fans are about to arrive on the train. 
The police have come out in force for this one, and their aim is to try and keep the fans apart. The helicopters are out, the horses are out, riot vans, everything. Right, so this is how the Ajax come in, yeah? The gate's closed at the moment. Obviously, old Bill all the way along here, yeah? All right. Now, when you're an Ajax fan, you come out in Rotterdam, final, yeah? This is what you're faced with, that. Bit intimidating. You wouldn't want to turn up just with your bird, for, for instance. But um, I would think if it goes off, it, you know, there's nowhere, there's nowhere to run, you know what I mean? It's Hoffman's. Hello. Yes? OK, yeah, sweet. Sweet. Let's get in the mix of it. Sweet, man. Sweet. Sweet, boys, sweet. Some of the Feyenoord fans recognise Danny from the Football Factory film. This is a high-risk game. The authorities have come up with a new security measure. Away fans have to buy a special combined football and travel ticket called a combi, and they travel straight from their city to the ground under police escort. So the way it works, is what I'm thinking, is what I've been told, is that Ajax get off at the station and get fed through this mad tube here, look. So there's no contact with the final at all. They'll wait along here, hopefully there's a couple of stragglers that come out, they can fry a few bottles at maybe. But, um, you know, it's very... They're on top of it, the old Bill, clearly. The Ajax train arrives and the anti-Semitic chanting begins. There's the Ajax, look, yeah. See the Ajax boys, look. See their little nuts popping over the top of the thing, trying to give it. The Ajax fans get in without any trouble, and the Feyenoord fans begin to disperse and enter the stadium. Here I go, ready to go in there, into the fucking melting pot. Our cameras are not allowed in for the game, it was a hammering. Feyenoord nil, Ajax four. The atmosphere was electric. They didn't stop singing. I know they feel a little bit being a West Ham fan because the passion of the supporters sometimes, most of the time, the team can't live up to it, you know? Feyenoord's defeat means that the tension is high. The crowd begin to turn on the police as they turn away the fans. Ajax leave the stadium chanting at some of the Feyenoord fans who are still down by the ground. The police are on top of things for this game. Danny's been hearing a lot about Feyenoord's reputation, so he'll be staying here to find out more about the city and their firm. Rotterdam's a gritty port city. And the two other teams here are Sparta Rotterdam and Excelsior. But anyone will tell you the only team worth talking about is Feyenoord. And I've heard they've got a proper firm. The Feyenoord Spurs game in 1974 marked the birth of hooliganism in Holland. Spurs attacked Feyenoord in Rotterdam, but 10 years later, Spurs returned. This time, Feyenoord were ready for them and three Spurs fans were stabbed. We went in the wrong end and uh, like, we didn't know that like, I bought the tickets for this other end and they just set upon us like the Dutch and we tried to jump out the end. Feyenoord's hooligan reputation began to spread abroad. By the late 90s, they were taking on big firms like Manchester United's Red Army. Feyenoord's hooligans were becoming one of the most feared firms in Europe at a time when the rave scene was growing in Holland. 